This meeting is being recorded. Uh, oh, good morning and welcome everyone to the um, scrutiny committee and everyone is welcome to use Welsh um, in the meeting and there is a simultaneous interpretation service from Welsh to English provided uh, by Stephen William who is translating um, through Zoom. All present are welcome to use the Welsh language during the meeting and simultaneous translation of Welsh into English is being provided by Stephen William, the translator via Zoom. This meeting is being held virtually with everyone accessing the meeting from remote locations. The meeting is being recorded and will be available via the Council's website to be viewed subsequently. Some of you may already be aware that I have a condition called adult onset epilepsy which occasionally results in the experience in short absences or mild seizures. On the rare occasions that this may happen in a meeting, you should not be alarmed, and should I as chair experience one of these absences or have any other technical ICT, ICT difficulties during the meeting, it has been agreed that Councillor Amanda Williams will step in temporarily as chair during the meeting, and in, and in, her, her, in her absence, then Councillor Tim Thomas will step in. Please can everyone ensure that mobile phones are switched off to silent mode. Uh, members will have received an electronic copy of the agenda and I will ask officers to present a summary of the key points. For the record, the agenda can be viewed on the Council's website. Members and officers will be speaking at various points during the meeting and those, uh, may, who, those who are speaking may switch their cameras on at that point. But I, I would ask that with the exception of myself as chairperson, at all other times, please do keep your cameras uh, and microphones switched off, as this will help to minimise any background noise or interference. If any members and officers wish to raise a point or question, they should click the raise hand icon, which can be found by clicking on the reactions button, followed by the raise hand icon at the bottom of the Zoom window. And I will come to you in the order I see the, the requests appear. However, unfortunately, Zoom does not prioritise the order of requests so I, I would ask that members remain patient while they wait to raise their point or question, and I will ensure that I get to you. Please lower your hand once you have finished speaking. The instant messaging chat button has not been disabled for the meeting, but I would ask that the participants refrain from using the chat function. For those present who would like to make the use of the Welsh to English translation, please click on the globe icon on the bottom of your Zoom window and choose English. For those present who are confident with understanding the Welsh language or who wish to use Welsh during the meeting, please leave this setting as original audio interpretation off. Please do not, do not use your microphone until I invite you to do so. Officers from scrutiny will be supporting the meeting and will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout its duration and where necessary will mute those not being used. I will ask officers to introduce themselves when I invite them to speak during the course of the meeting. They too should ensure microphones and cameras are switched off when not in use. I will now proceed to the agenda of the meeting. And we'll go to item one, apologies for absence. Lucy, could you uh, announce the apologies for absence received, please? It's going to be Jess, 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 sorry. Thank you, Chair. I've received apologies for absence from Councillor Martin Jones and Councillor Joanna Llewellyn Hopkins, um, as well as apologies from Lindsay Morris, one of our reg registered representatives, um, and Myrig Jones, head teacher of a school given Gamrai um, will be will be in attendance, but will be arriving late to the meeting. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Rachel? Thank you, Chair. Yes, sorry, I just haven't had a chance to get these over to Jess. Uh, Councillor Tilsley has also sent his apologies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rachel. Are there any further apologies? Okay, we now move to item two on the agenda. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, that's declarations of interest. 
If any member has an interest to declare in any matter on the agenda, please click on the raise hand icon and I will come to you in turn. No? Okay, I now move to item three, and that's the Welsh in Education Strategic Plan. Just to bring it up. And please click on English if you'd like to receive a translation at any point. Now, uh, Hopun or the And now I'd like to ask the uh, leader or Councillor Blundell uh, whether they have any comments, uh, opening comments or not, um, uh, which they would wish to make before I invite Lindsay to introduce the report. Councillor Bundell. Yes, thank you, Chair. Let me remember to lower my hand before I forget. Uh, no, thank you, um, Councillor Williams and Chair, to uh, bringing this report to uh, committee today. It is a, a very important document, as many who have read it will know, because it outlines our policy and how we will develop Welsh language in Bridgeton for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years as we move forward. It is a starting block. It's not the finish. We're not finished. This is not where we want to be. This is where our starting position. We want to keep moving forward. We're not, this is it and we're going to end it. No, we want to continue to develop on the good work that's already been done by our Welsh medium primary and secondary schools. And I, that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you for coming. We're happy to answer any questions. Lindsay will go through in, in, in great detail as well. Many of the officers who have brought it with me today have brought through quite a few for you all. So there's a, quite a few for you to uh, quiz and question. But that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Blenzel. I'll now ask officers to present the report. Good morning, Chair. Um, for the purpose of the recording, I'm Lindsay Harvey. I'm the Corporate Director of Education and Family Support. Um, Michelle Hatcher, the Group Leader for Learner Support, who is the Strategic Lead for WESP, with your permission, will talk us through the report today. As Councillor Bundle has uh, mentioned, a number of, of expert officers are here today to answer any questions you may have. And again, we'd be more than happy to, to pick up any points later. So through you, Chair, I'd like to invite Michelle Hatcher to uh, talk to the report. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Michelle. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Michelle Hatcher. I'm the Group Manager for Assistance for Learners. And so I will now take you through the report this morning. If I can just point out at the start, um, apologies, but I need to advise committee that there's an error in the report. And instead of it reading as the Welsh Language Act, it should read as the measure, and that can be found in 3.1 and 4.3. So it's been um, alluded to already, the purpose of the report is to update um, the committee on the implementation and progress of the Welsh in Education Strategic Plan. This is a 10 year plan from 2022 to 2032. So we are a couple of months into the implementation of that plan. You would have seen in point three, that gives the background as to um, the link to the, the measure and um, also the commitments that we've needed to meet in, in approving the West previously in 2014 and approval from Welsh government um, being sought then. Again, it gives you various dates as to um, the um, milestones that we've needed to meet in the various guises of the WESP. 3.5 then talks about the link to the Welsh um, language, the Welsh Government's commitment of, of 2050, a million Welsh speakers strategy. Then in 3.6, it um, links us to um, the COVID-19 pandemic and again, the extension of um, the submission of the, of the WESP um, as a result of that. 3.7, the first year, um, the first 10 year WESP commenced on the 1st of September. This was um, given permission by cabinet to consult on in 3.8 
and that outcome of the consultation process was reported back to cabinet and approval sub for, to submission for Welsh government. So um, the WESP was submitted in a timely uh, fashion and approved. And I think that's really important that this is an approved WESP. We're really pleased with how that has been developed in partnership with our Welsh and Education Forum members and um, Welsh Government has endorsed that. So we are looking forward, as we've already started, to implement um, the various aspects of the WESP and you know, look forward to, to coming in future to, to actually show and outline the developments that we've made. It also links in 3.11 to uh, Bridgend's Local Government Education Service Inspection, which was in March 2019. And recommendation four of that inspection was to strengthen the WEF Forum. And we believe that we've already done that um, and we continue to strengthen in, in line with, with the plan. We've reviewed the terms of reference, which you'll see in appendix two, and um, there's been a strong voice um, from the WEF, both in the um, development of the full WESP, the 10-year WESP, and the five-year plan. So the current situation is, um, it's a priority, a very strong high priority within the directorate, and there is a, there's a golden thread right the way through to Lindsay as corporate director reporting that through to the, to the Corporate Management Board, and it um, features in the, the Learner Support Business Plan. It also aligns to the uh, Welsh Language Promotion Strategy 2021-2026, and we work very closely, um, particularly recently with Alex Howells in the Im implementation of that strategy and aligning that with the WEF, and that member sits on the, the WEF Forum. Also links to the measure, as, as uh, I've explained previously, and the head of Welsh in Welsh Government's Education Planning Branch is also a member of Bridgend's WEF. We work very closely in 4.4 with Central South Consortium, and that member sits on the WEF, who has strategic lead for the Welsh, but also um, is chair of the subgroup for outcome three, four and five. As I mentioned earlier in 4.5, we've revisited the terms of reference and those have been adopted and agreed by WEF members and subsequently within the subgroups. These will be reviewed um, on a two year ba basis um, and um, again in the subgroups will do the same thing. 4.6, the first meeting of the WEF was held on the 24th of November and a presentation was, be, had, was given by um, Becca Avji, who is our WESP coordinator, and also feedback from all the subgroups that were held in the workshops um, to feed into the five-year plan. As I've mentioned in 4.7 and 4.8, those that outlines the subgroups that we've established and chairs have been appointed to all of those subgroups and a meeting has been held of, that, of those subgroups in September and also um, workshops with a focus of developing the, the five-year plan. If I take you down then to the financial implication, implications, so that's linking with uh, Central South Consortium, the Education Improvement Grant, and um, Becca is doing a sterling job, has been working with us since September, but that, that money, that funding is up until March, uh, the 31st of March, 2024. So um, we would be looking to seek alternative funding mechanisms uh, in order to ensure that we have a real strong um, coordination uh, as well as the strategic lead for the West. So it's recommended that um, committee notes the progress made and provides any feedback as necessary. Thank you, Chair. Diachamarian. Michelle. Well, thank you, Michelle. And we uh, open now the floor to questions on the presentation and to discuss the um, main report. Um, before moving on to discuss the um, findings of the uh, five groups that have been established. Um, 
uh, outcome two, uh, more reception class and children and five-year-olds receiving their education through the medium of Welsh. Uh, outcomes three, four and five, um, more children continuing to improve their Welsh language skills when transferring from one stage to their statutory education to another, more learners studying for assessed qualifications in Welsh and subjects through the medium of Welsh and more opportunities for learners to use Welsh in different contexts in schools. And then outcome six and seven, an increase in the provision of Welsh medium education for pupils with uh, additional learning needs. Uh, uh, and then we'll uh, proceed to discussing promotion, marketing and celebration. So uh, do any members have any uh, comments, first of all, on the cover report? Please raise your hand if you wish to intervene. Councillor Tim Thomas, please. Yeah, Dioch, uh, Alex, um, Chair. Um, yeah, picked up on the misquote of the legislation, so thanks, Michelle, for, for uh, clarifying that. Um, in the report, there's a recommendation by Estin to strengthen the Welsh in Education Forum, the WEF. Um, I understand that the Cabinet member quite rightly sits on that, but I wonder if um, you could uh, let me know how backbench councillors could engage in that forum or feed into that forum at all. Thank you, Tim. Councillor Blundell. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, um, members can feed in, obviously, when they come into scrutiny and things like that. I have asked officers to check the regs, because I think myself and Councillor Williams, the Chair, um, had this little com had this conversation the other day and uh, see if uh, backbench members can also sit on the WEF, because as you say, it's not just my report, it's not just uh, Cabinet's report, it's our full Council report. Um, I haven't had an answer just yet, but um, if you'll indulge me, I'm happy to come back at a later time and write back to the committee saying whether or not they can. Yeah, and uh, I think under the terms of reference from uh, WEF, uh, Councillor Blundell, um, and thank you for that response, by the way. Uh, I think under the terms of reference, uh, certainly we can um, invite uh, members as observers, um, maybe not uh, participants, but certainly as observers. Uh, it depends, I suppose, on whether you would like uh, to see uh, a separation between WEF and scrutiny uh, in our role of scrutinising the Welsh uh, um, strategic plan going forward, or whether you would value um, input from this committee, whether it be from me as a chair or any other member for that matter um, on that. So thank you for your commitment to writing to us uh, on that matter. No problem, Chair. And, and as always, I, I welcome all input from any members um, on, on any, not just the WEF or WESP, but on any issue that we have in, in, in my directorate. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, 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 Hugh David. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair. It, just on that point, we had a tiny uh, meeting of the School Improvement Group uh, uh, this week, and of course, one of the uh, uh, outcomes is around improving standards, and uh, at the heart of the, 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 the work and the focus of the School Improvement Group uh, that uh, I chair is, is that focus on standards in all our schools. So at the very uh, least, what we uh, talked about uh, uh, it, this week was was how we can uh, make that systematic in terms of the link with with the West because obviously we 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 do um, uh, closely monitor all schools including all our Welsh medium uh, uh, schools and uh, Welsh uh, provision in our English uh, medium uh, schools uh, but at, at the very least there will be that report back on uh, the progress of of West and you. Uh, play a very important role as Chair of Overland Scrutiny Committee on that school improvement group and can be that link as a minimum between the uh, backbench uh, members and, and the Overland Scrutiny Committee and um, the school improvement group and the, and the work around uh, the WASP. Uh, so, so we will uh, build on that as a, as, a, as a very least in terms of strengthening those, those links, uh, Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Thomas. Uh, many thanks, uh, Leader. Uh, I'll go now to Reverend Canon Evans. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, this um, really is a sort of a, a generic question, and I, but I suppose it comes under the financial implications. Um, 
to do with resources uh, and availability of them and the quality of them. Uh, some years ago, colleagues of mine in the secondary sector, in a particular directorate uh, area, uh, complained about the availability uh, of resources and textbooks, and also about when they were available, uh, the quality of them. Some of them were quite inadequate uh, for the needs of uh, GCSE and A-level purposes. I'm just wondering, we are pushing forward quite rightly with uh, an increase in Welsh education, are resources and textbooks and the quality of them keeping up with um, this push, uh, this demand? And what about the resourcing of them and the finances to resource schools with textbooks? Textbooks uh, are necessary, even though we do use um, IT a great deal, there was still necessity for textbooks and books are very expensive. So what about the finance uh, for these resources? Um, if someone could comment on that, I'd be, I'd be grateful. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Karen Evans. Uh, I'll bring in Lindsay now, the Corporate Director for Education. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Karen Evans. It's a really important question. Um, clearly, it, there's, there's a lot of issues with the, the pressure on budgets with all local authorities at the moment, especially around education. One of the things we, we've obviously invested in um, significantly in Bridgend and across Wales is the availability of digital resources. Now, the, obviously, the benefit of digital resources is they can constantly be updated. And one of the challenges with hard copy documentation, of course, is far more expensive to update that. So you're right. Um, it is a challenge going forward. But I would certainly encourage members to visit Hub, um, the All Wales Learning Platform. There's significant investment there at a Welsh government level. All of the resources there are made available bilingually. So obviously a parity in English and Welsh. And also from a, a local uh, point of view, from Bridgend, um, we've invested heavily in our Welsh medium schools by delivering one-to-one -one Chromebook deployment to all of our Welsh medium schools. So again, you know, it's, it's a real push, not just on Welsh language, with regard to our English medium schools, so for example, our work around Chart Daily Eighth, but specifically around the additional resources we provided to our Welsh medium schools to allow children on a one-to-one -one basis to access some of these um, excellent resources that are available nationally. Uh, more than happy to take any other questions, Chair, but thank you, uh, Cameron Evans. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. That, that's reassuring to know that. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, Councillor Huday, please. Uh, Chen, just to um, uh, give an example of the, the positive feedback uh, we received only yesterday, we happened to be in Esculvach Esquerre in, in, in Canelli, uh, where they've had um, deployment of the Chromebooks and uh, for, for one for every uh, student. And uh, we had very uh, positive feedback from uh, staff and students about the, the value of, of, of that. And I have to say that I was very impressed by the by the range of of, of resources that were available and the and the displays as well. Uh, uh, Director of Education in 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 the in in the classrooms and on the on on the walls. And so undoubtedly, I think there has been a significant improvement in the in the range and quality of of resources available um, for. Um, the uh, provision of, of learning through the, the medium of Welsh and, the, and about the, the, the Welsh language as well. Dior. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor David. Uh, does anyone else have anything on the cover report before I uh, intervene with my questions? I can't see any hands to be raised, but Zoom is a curious system. No, I can't see any. So I'll uh, just... Uh, Go through some of my questions if I may um, on the cover report uh, and just for invitees and um, members and officers information we are using the public information pack which has been circulated uh, for the whole of this meeting uh, and not to be confused with the page numbers on the actual um, WESP report uh, so I refer to page four and five of the public information pack and points 3.8 and 3.9 um, Lindsay or Lindsay or Michelle, uh, you refer to the consultation on the draft WESP. Uh, in short, uh, what was the result of the consultation? Were stakeholders broadly supportive of the original strategy? And what did what did you change as a result of the consultation process in the final WESP? So 
Sorry, Chair. I, shall I come in? I, I trying to uh, work, yes, my, fine, yeah. work on, everything. Yeah, I know it's diff diff difficult to juggle all the balls, isn't it, with these machines? <laughs> yeah. So um, yes, the consultation was 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 widely distributed. The members of WEF um, heavily fed back, which was which is really really good. And as a result, things were amended. Um, obviously, it's it's really important to have that consultation. Um, and you know, we did make a we did make amendments. To go into detail of what was amended, it's quite a large document. But I can say that you know, a, as a result, things were kind of amended, tweaked. Um, and then that was reported back to cabinet. So, you know, cabinet had seen the initial um, um, document to go out to consultation and then the document as a result of, of, of the consultation. Also um, linked very closely in with Welsh government. So they saw various guises of it along the way and were very, you know, were very supportive of that. So yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a genuine valid um, consultation process. Good. Okay. Thank you, uh, Shah. I don't expect you to go into great detail in this meeting, but as long as uh, it was a invaluable process. Um, just going to page five now, uh, draw members' attention to uh, point, uh, 3.11 point, uh, on page five. Um, you note that um, Estin recommended, recommended that the role of WEF uh, should be strengthened uh, to ensure timely progress in delivering the priorities identified in the WESP. Now, uh, what have you done to ensure that, that this has occurred? Has the membership and structure of WEF, uh, to which you refer in section four, uh, helped strengthen that process? Or have you done anything else which has uh, strengthened the WEF in any way? Hi, yes, I'll come in to start with. Other colleagues might want to come in. So yes, we've revisited the membership of, 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 of WEF to make sure that we've got that a wide kind of membership. We've also strengthened the voice. So, you know, the establishment of subgroups is really important because a lot of the work will be undertaken um, within those subgroups because it's really important that everybody has a responsibility and a voice into WES. It isn't just the local authority, it is partners feeding in and, you know, everybody has a role to play. So I think, you know, and recently with the workshops and the subgroup meetings, we can see that strengthening. So, you know, as an initial start to that, I think certainly it has, um, and I'm sure Lindsay could add to, to my initial comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michelle. Lindsay, please. Thank you, Chair. If it makes people feel better, I, I struggle with uh, Zoom and trying to put the mic on and, and, and the screen on as well, so apologies. So I think we're all in the same boat. Um, just to build on what Michelle says, and just to recognise really that the recommendation by Estin was correct. It wasn't where it needed to be a few years ago. And I think one of the things that's a strength, certainly of the directorate, is, is to recognise weaknesses and to work on them. So we, we took that um, on board and certainly put a lot of things in place to make sure it was better. So I'll give you some examples, really, of how we've done it, just to build on Michelle's answer. First of all, we wanted to make sure that we involved Welsh Government in shape in the terms of reference for the WEF. We thought it was important to draw upon best practice from across Wales. Um, we've got the head of Welsh Education, obviously, as a member of the group, who's an excellent member of the group, a, a very experienced civil servant. Um, and she's helped us really shape the new terms of reference. Now, where we're very lucky in Bridgen, we've got expert contributions on the WEF. So again, if I refer to page four within the appendix two there, um, I'll just pick up some of the representation with the, um, the WEF, which has made the WEF a lot better. So obviously we have input from Welsh for Adults and Mentor Brogio. We also have a very strong representation from the early years sector with Midian Maitrin. And also, as we've got on the call today, expert representation from Central South Consortium who provide that, that, that curriculum support and challenge to us. We also benefit hugely from the support and input from RAG, that's uh, Rieni uh, Drosadis Kamrai, who represent parents in Welsh medium education, and also the number of other organisations, for example, Bridgend College, um, higher education institutions from around the region. And again, as I mentioned, strong representation from Welsh Government. So what we've done, Chair, we, we've tried to make sure that the, the terms of reference are, are, are as strong as they possibly can be. We've made sure that they're aligned with the expectations of Welsh Government and other local authorities. We've made sure that the voice is heard of all of our partner organisations. And clearly one of the things we all want to achieve, which is a, a clear golden thread through the West, is to promote, improve 
and really build on the success of the excellent work in our Welsh medium schools in Bridgend and also the excellent work that our English medium schools are doing in respect of Welsh language. So to answer the question, yes, certainly strengthened. We are confident in that. Obviously, we report back to Estyn on a termly basis through our local authority link inspector meetings. Uh, they are satisfied that we're certainly moving in the right direction. And certainly, as Michelle said, with the appointment of Becca as our WESP coordinator um, from September, obviously it's moved on from strength to strength. Um, if, it, it, if I might ask uh, uh, Chair, it might be helpful through you, is if we could just invite Becca, because in, Becca has started with us in September. She's been instrumental, obviously, in, in driving this forward. And through you, Chair, it might be worthwhile sort of uh, getting some comments from Becca, who's relatively new to the team, but I think has done a really good job. Thank you for that comprehensive response, Lindsay. And yes, Becca, of course, welcome to the uh, team, and uh, you're more than welcome to make any contributions. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, it's been um, quite a busy time with everything um, since I started in September with getting subgroups and um, sorted. And it's really important to make sure that the membership of those subgroups were, were, were right, because it's really important for everybody to be able to feed um, confidently into, into those into the plans. And, um, and so far, so good. Um, we've met um, all the subgroups have met um, once and we've got other dates in the calendar for the rest of the year and we also met as um, as work within our subgroups as to um, workshops in person where everybody's able to contribute to the five-year plan. Yeah. Great, thank you very much Becca and just uh, to remind uh, other invitees as well please don't um, uh, forget that you can intervene at any time by raising your hand. Please don't be too polite and allow members to go first. You, you don't have to ask a sp specific question. You can always intervene on uh, any point you wish to do so during the course of the meeting. And please feel free, everybody, if you can, um, and you're far better at, at Welsh than me, please don't hesitate to use the Welsh language because we do have the excellent Stephen William, our interpreter here uh, today, uh, uh, who will uh, facilitate the translation into English. So please do come in there. Uh, when appropriate. And thank you, Becca, for those comments. I just have two further um, comments on the cover report, if I may. Um, page six at uh, 4.9. Um, you mentioned, uh, Becca uh, and Lindsay, uh, Michelle, that each subgroup has been meeting during the autumn term um, in advance of submitting the five year WESP. So um, you mentioned during the course of the report uh, what you'd like to see. Um, uh, at year five, um, but uh, is there an outline of what you'd like to achieve? Um, uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to gather is that, ha I assume this has now been finalized now, given the deadline of 16th of December. So could we have a um, copy of it just for our information in due course, along with an action plan? Because um, it, for, from my perspective, in reading through uh, all, all of these very um, ad admirable aims, um, we would like to see, I think, a delivery timetable, who owns the specific action, so that we as a scrutiny committee can monitor and measure some of the key deliverables on the different outcomes on a relatively regular basis and based on whatever timescale you deem uh, is appropriate. Um, I think all members are appreciative of very ambitious overall strategies, um, but clearly we'd like to see a, a map of how they're going to be achieved in practice, especially given, Michelle, you said in your opening remarks that this is considered a corporate priority um, and um, you already report regularly to corporate management board on progress so I think we'd like to see that action plan and deliverables if at all possible so um, perhaps uh, Michelle can come in and uh, explain how we can how we can do that. Um, so we've been working uh, as I've alluded to on the action plan so that was submitted um, to um, Lindsay yesterday, so that that is going to be taken to Corporate Management Board and CCMB. With, then that needs to be submitted to Welsh Government for the 16th. So when, I have, when we have the approval to release that um, five-year plan, um, we will do so. It does clearly outline um, things that need to be prioritised within the first year and you will see the link then to the WESP because we've clearly identified in the 10-year WESP which things need to be um, actioned within the first year. 
So, um, you know, Becca and I, in writing that, we've made sure that's been pulled through. And then um, obviously the timelines are then put in for the five years. Obviously, some things are um, statutory timelines. So there's some things that can't move. Um, but then we've moved some other things around which where that can be supported. So, um, yes, it's written, um, but obviously um, it needs to go through the approval routes. Thank you very much, Michelle. Uh, Councillor David, the leader, and then Lindsay, please. Thank you, uh, Chair. I wanted to reassure colleagues that uh, all, all the major decisions will also have to be reported and made by, by Cabinet. So I'll give some obvious examples, and, and the most recent examples uh, will be the decision we made to expand and relocate uh, Askogum Rai Broagu, um, that um, will deliver a major expansion in the number of uh, Welsh medium primary places in, in the borough meeting current and growing uh, demand in, in the future. That's been subject to a, uh, a, a series of, of cabinet uh, reports. Likewise, the opening of uh, four new childcare hubs at uh, Betos, Black Mill, Puthcall, and uh, Bridgend, and one of those will be at um, at, at Broago. Uh, and then um, certainly in, in recent months, the very exciting proposals around the new uh, Welsh uh, medium seedling school in, in Puthcall, our first media, uh, Welsh medium seedling school there, and, uh, and to complete it. And I, I think that that's uh, most of all uh, or all of the the recent reports that the 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 progress on uh significantly expanding and building a replacement school for um for Ver but perhaps what we can do is uh, what we will do is is map that out and and show the different um routes in terms of governance uh, that will oversee it because it is such a a, a big program of lots of different streams and different projects of, of significant uh, scale that they will report uh, to, to different uh, uh, places. But, but all the flagship projects will be uh, reported to um, Cabinet. And also what we will have to do, because Cabinet will have responsibility for the WASP and ensuring we deliver on the WASP, is that there will be at the very least annual reports to cabinet uh, uh, where we will monitor carefully uh, progress and of, of course the WEF itself and Welsh government will take a very keen interest in ensuring that uh, progress is as, is as quick as it as it can be and, and needs to be around uh, the the outcomes thanks chair Thank you, Leader. I think that's uh, that would be an appropriate uh, recommendation which we can make uh, later on. Um, that so you set out that governance and action plan because clearly, as a, a scrutiny committee, we have a role in uh, measuring um, measuring you and uh, the directorate against its commitments. So I'll bring in Lindsay now, please. Thank you, Chair. It's just to answer your question really around the detail, I think, and this is really important, that one. Um, yes, Michelle is right. I, I, I had the, the final draft of the, um, the five-year plan yesterday. I can confirm, because I made a note of it last night, there are 148 pages in it, um, um, and against the seven outcomes, there's over 100 targets. So it is comprehensive, and I think the important thing, going back to the question you asked earlier, which is a really important question, is how was it generated? Well, of course, it was generated by all the stakeholders contributing to those subgroups and those subgroups have populated the five-year action plan so the voice of stakeholders and delivery partners is obviously very strong here so just to confirm a very detailed plan and we'll no doubt share it with you in due course chair thank you very much uh, Lindsay that's uh, reassuring uh, finally then uh, from my perspective and this is uh, following on from uh, Reverend Canon Evans's uh, uh, perspective on financial implications and the resources which are required to deliver upon the WESP 
Um, so with regards to the financial implications, um, you mentioned within your cover report on page seven that you need to find alternative finance mechanisms to ensure that a West coordinator can continue beyond March 2024. So uh, can you outline what finance mechanisms will be explored? Uh, will it be via a reserve again? Uh, because this is clearly, as you've already mentioned, is a crucial role in, in ensuring that the West is actually delivered. And then, of course, what additional funding has come to the local authority and, of course, other local authorities um, within Wales from the Welsh Government uh, following the commitment of implements in the West, you know, with everything, inevitably there will be a financial impact of ensuring that the Welsh language is promoted and that we're able to incentivise recruitment and retention of Welsh language proficient professionals, both in a childcare and education setting. If no funding has actually been provided by Welsh Government, uh, it rests on the local authority to find that funding from somewhere. So what has the cabinet member, the leader uh, and uh, the corporate director been doing to lobby for this funding to flow down from central government so that uh, this can be achieved? I don't know who raised their hand first, but we'll bring in uh, the leader, then the cabinet member and then the corporate director. You're on <laughs> Uh, you were on mute, but yeah, apologies. <laughs> uh, this is a this is a shared ambition with the Welsh government, and and to be fair to Welsh government, uh, it, it in this uh, space and on this objective, um, they have prioritised and targeted and made available uh, multi million pound uh, investment uh, funding uh, streams. So. The four new childcare hubs that um, I, I referred to earlier in, in the Ogmore, Garrow, Pithcall and, and Bridgen, those new hubs have been fully funded by uh, Welsh uh, government. Uh, likewise, the, uh, the proposals around 21st century uh, modernisation programme are schools. As, uh, as, as members will know, because it, it's been reported to, to full council and agreed by by all members, we've had a significant uh, uh, level of investment. We wouldn't be able to progress it without support from uh, Welsh Government. And indeed, they've increased their uh, intervention uh, rate um, for the, the, the capital programme for our uh, new schools uh, to, to reflect the increased costs, um, the requirement for net zero uh, carbon, and just the recognition that the scale and size of the investment means that it has to be on a partnership basis with, with the lion's share of the funding coming uh, from uh, Welsh government. So we, we continue to make that, uh, uh, make that case at every opportunity with Welsh government ministers. You wouldn't expect any uh, less of us. And uh, we, we also uh, know that um, the Welsh Government have made funding available uh, to, to fully fund initiatives and projects like the new Seedling School in uh, Call. There's, there's a lot of um, competition and, and interest in, in that stream, stream of funding, but it, again, it's, it's another uh, stream where it's full funding that will be provided from uh, Welsh government. So thank, thank you for that. Um, it, it's a, it is a very important question given the uh, financial challenges we, we face, but there's no indication that the Welsh government will, 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 will change their, their priority and, and commitment to, to the Welsh language. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for that reassurance, Leader, because obviously we're all um, conscious of the fact that we have over 800 services to deliver, and if there are further financial implications uh, as a result of Welsh Government and central government policy, funding should uh, inevitably flow with that. So uh, I'll now go, to, now go to the Cabinet Member, uh, Councillor Blumber, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to sort of strengthen the point that the Leader made there and, and say, you know the Welsh government are you know, the investment they're making a flagship in uh, with the MIM project in Escalaveca Scare in in, in Canelli and the new build there and also 
on a lobbying point of view to make sure Bridge End and the Welsh Government still keep giving us that funding. I often meet with uh, the Minister and I've got a meeting indeed next week in the calendar um, to discuss discuss uh, West and our five year plan and our 10 year plan and, uh, and the document that you see in front of you mm. and how we're going to meet that. Um, on a WLGA level, uh, myself and my 21 other uh, colleagues in education, we meet with the minister and we have these conversations. It was raised at our most recent uh, meeting as a, as a priority, as well as others, that the Welsh Government, and we had that assurance that the Welsh Government are still committed to this. The Cymraeg 2050 is it's a very important policy, especially to the, to the minister, um, and that's where we're going with this. Um, and apologies if you heard that, that was John Spanswick coming for the door. Um, so I will finish there. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bundle. Does anyone else have any questions on the cover report before we delve deeper into the outcomes and the uh, WASP in detail? I can't see any hands. So that leads us on to the main report, and it's quite a, a logical uh, step forward for me to ask this question of the overall West, and then I'll bring in uh, other members and invitees, if I may, uh, because um, it features what uh, Councillor Bundle has just mentioned, and that's the Cymraeg uh, 2050 uh, plan. Um, you mentioned, Councillor Bundle, and uh, all officers and the leader thus far, that the West is uh, very closely aligned to the Welsh Government's Cymraeg 2050 ambition, and this is to see a million Welsh speakers by 2050. Um, you say that in order to meet our contribution to this target by the end of the 10-year West period, we need to almost double the number of learners, uh, and that's an ambitious target by any standards. Uh, but uh, I question, I suppose, whether um, our proposal to ensure that we close our county boundaries for access of Welsh language education from beyond our borders is the appropriate approach. So, for example, you remember that at, at a re recent meeting of full council, I raised the issue of Welsh language provision and home to school transport with a number of pupils in the east of the county, uh, in the uh, area which I represent of Penn College and Gila and they were currently accessing their Welsh language provision from a school governor in Um, There are also issues regarding uh, Welsh language provision in other areas of the county borough um, or near the county borders. Um, for example, Gilbach Gork and Hendervorgan, uh, where pupils live closer to a school governor Tona Revile or a school uh, So, uh, it may, may sound parochial, but it does have a wide, wider, str wider strategic implications for the overall achievement of Cymraeg 2050. So if we solely look at our local authorities within our own individual silos, rather than a cross-border context, context, I question whether we're going to achieve the, uh, the aim. Uh, so uh, I very much appreciate comments on that. Um, clearly, um, the recent transport policy change prevents these communities from accessing local Welsh medium education and remaining with their siblings and peers within their communities. And this is off-putting when parents make these decisions for their children. And uh, furthermore, um, it would be useful to know um, whether, whether or not having catchment areas for Welsh medium schools and treating the Welsh language um, in equality with that of English uh, would be appropriate. Um, so uh, perhaps uh, members could make some comments on those overall points before we delve into some of the outcomes. Councillor Blandle. Yes, thank you, Chair. Now, I, on the um, catchment areas, it is something I, I, when I became cabinet member back in May, it was one of the things that was raised with me first um, from uh, the Welsh, uh, the Welsh uh, language uh, lobby but i feel i'm missing misinterpreting the word there um that we should be looking at catchment areas it's something that was raised with me with the head of a school governing Myreg. he raised it with me on our first meeting and probably will raise it with me time and time again so it is something we are looking into um i don't we're not in a position yet to sort of give you any detail into that and nor do i think you'd want me to, to give you that right now um because it is something we are looking into on that um, going forwards on bringing in school catchment areas for Welsh medium language schools, because it is something they've asked for. And I, I, I'm very happy to look into it. And we are on the issue you raised uh, around uh, Uskal Lanhari and, and others. 
Um, I know there is a the Welsh Language Commissioner is, is sort of looking at that at the moment. And so I, I don't think it'd be appropriate for me to sort of uh, make any greater comment on that. And just to say that we have a great Welsh medium comprehensive here in Bridgend, uh, who with a head teacher that went head teacher of the year. So I, I'm very proud of that. But uh, at the moment, that's all I'm going to say on that. And I hope you'll I hope you'll accept that, Chair. Yes, uh, of course, I appreciate your, your uh, position. I'll bring in uh, my colleague now from Pencoid and Pempisk, uh, Melanie Evans. Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you, Councillor Blundell, for those comments. Obviously, after reading some of the uh, WEF uh, uh, documentation as well, I'm delighted that the WEF have recognised and proposed the creation of catchment areas for Bridgend's Welsh primary schools, as obviously, historically, Welsh medium primary and Welsh medium secondary school has not had catchment areas. I think, I suppose, um, a question that I would put forward to that would be, should out of county schools be included in Bridgend's catchment areas? Should it be decided and agreed as the WEF has proposed the creation of new Welsh medium catchment areas? And also, um, with regards to, as Councillor um, Alex Williams has actually alluded, our chair today, um, what, to, to yourself, Councillor Blundell, would you consider putting a Welsh seedling school in Pencoid like you were doing in Porth Cole? Thank you, well, Chair. Chair, can, well, I, can, I, can I come in? Yes, you can. And I, yes, you can, and I fully support Councillor Alex. <laughs> I, I, I am not surprised. I would be shocked <laughs> if you didn't. Uh, I'll bring Robin uh, and Lindsay in on the, um, the details of uh, the boundaries. Uh, because they are vastly more adept than I am answering those questions, as you probably imagine. Um, but on the Welsh Edeland School, yes, Councillor Evans, I am very happy to look into it. It's something that we haven't got to the southeast at the present moment in time. And if it will allow the growth of Welsh language in our southeast of the of the borough in Pencoy, Coychurch, and, and so on, then I'm more than happy to look into that. Uh, I know we've seen representations from yourself. Uh, Councillor Evans and Councillor Williams about this. Um, so I've asked Lindsay and the team to look into it. And again, early days, we so can't give any details, uh, but we are that is something we are definitely looking into and hopefully something we can report back uh, at a later date. But if you uh, indulge me, I, I'd like to bring Rob in or Lindsay in on the um, catchment area detailing. Thank you, Joe. Sure. Thank you, Councillor Randall. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Evans, as well for that. Uh... Uh, very helpful question. Uh, Lindsay, please. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Councillor Evans. I, I agree. It is a very important question. I think, first of all, to, to address the, the, the South East um, challenge, I think that's a, a really important priority for us within the next phase of Sustainable Communities for Learning. Um, it's certainly something that's mentioned within the, the Welsh and Education Plan. Um, and it's certainly something that uh, we are aiming to um, to prioritise within the next round of Welsh Government funding. Um, this has come through, Chair, from the WEF. Um, they've identified two strategic areas for growth. Um, obviously, Puthcorn and the leaders referred to um, the Welsh Medium Seedling School um, that we're hoping to, to establish soon. And also with regard to um, the South East, in line with our local development plan, it's clear that uh, there's a requirement for additional provision there. Um, with regard to, to legislation, I, I, th I think Councillor Evans was looking at a sort of cross-local authority um, catchment area. Um, at present, I don't believe, and Robin can correct me if I'm incorrect here, I don't believe that current legislation permits that um, cross-county um, catchments. But I think Councillor Evans raises a really important point, because obviously we want to make sure that we grow the Welsh language, we want to make sure there are no barriers to do that. So I think it's important to just to note that where learners for Bridgend are currently in Welsh medium schools in other local authorities, well, namely RCT, obviously when they're in that current phase of, of provision, um, it's been supported by home school transport for those learners. The policy change um, enacted some three years ago obviously doesn't uh, permit that. And, and one of the reasons we changed that policy is in line with um, the, the feedback we had from a number of stakeholders, namely our Welsh medium schools within the county borough. Um, as Councillor Blundell says, I can't comment any further on that outside those facts, because obviously it, it is currently with the Welsh Language Commissioner. And uh, again, we will provide an update to members in due course around that. So I, I don't know uh, through, through you, Chair, whether Robin, if I've got the legislation correct there, uh, I'm more than happy to be corrected, Chair. 
Thank you, Lindsay. Robin? No, thanks very much, Chair. Thanks, Lindsay. No, you are correct. Um, the local authority can only create catchment areas for the schools that um, it's an admission authority for. So that effectively the schools within the control of the local authority. So um, uh, an interesting suggestion, Councillor Evans, and, and um, but unfortunately the current legislation would not permit us to include um, any school outside of the county boundaries um, because the, those schools um, uh, are not part of the local authorities um, arrangements. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Uh, does that satisfy you, uh, Councillor Evans, or would you like to come back? Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm having trouble with the Zoom, as like everyone else, I think. Yeah, um, so. No, whilst I do appreciate um, that, obviously I am concerned because as, as I'm, I'm reading reports, I'm well aware that Llangonoid as well, it, you're looking at different provisional sites to actually grow Llangonoid. And obviously if we are increasing the Welsh language, considering we've got what, four primary schools, however, we've only got one secondary school. So that is a concern, obviously. And I suppose to, to reiterate my question, you know, I mean, should out of county schools be included in Bridgen's catchment areas? You know, because that is a question that basically to grow the Welsh language, I, I understand the legalities, but is there an opportunity to change, to look forward? Councillor Van Blendel, please. I'm happy to raise that with the minister next week um, and write back to the committee upon his answer or their answer, because I'm assuming that he'll come with um, a delegation. Um, so I'm happy to write back. I'm happy to raise that with the minister as, uh, as always. So Councillor Evans and I will report back. Thank you. Very, very helpful, Councillor Blendell. Thank you. Uh, I know uh, you're limited in what you can say uh, as the matter is before the Welsh Language Commissioner, but I think the point uh, uh, is um, that you um, you welcome is that you appreciate that it's not as easy for families where there are more English medium schools closer uh, in accessing it. Now, I know, uh, I know without wanting to put words in your mouth, Lindsay, you will say that we do, and you know, we do have one of the most generous home to school transport policies uh, beyond the statutory minimum uh, anywhere in Wales. However, you know, the, in practice, on the ground, uh, it still means that, uh, regrettably, families are actually taking, them, uh, taking their children outside of uh, education and they're not transitioning through uh, the whole uh, of their uh, educational life because they don't see it as a real option for them. So, um, unless anyone has anything further on the um, introduction, we'll now move to outcome one. Uh, does anyone have any comments on outcome one? Councillor Tim Thomas, outcome one. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so the outcome, outcome one is more nursery children, effectively more three-year-olds, uh, conversing in the medium of Welsh for education and uh, I don't think anybody will deny that's a very laudable aim that's something that I very much support uh, and, and I speak from my experience of uh, sending my children to uh, a Maitherin, Maitherin Pencoid in your ward chair uh, excellent uh, start to their education I was a little bit surprised and this is something I raised with the director when I first got elected back in 2017 the numbers of parents that discontinued their uh, education in the medium of Welsh after, after the Maitrin stage into, into the primary stage. So there, there appears to be a cutoff in the transition from Maitrin to primary. And I'm just wondering if the cabinet member, um, well, one thing I called for is some research into, into the reasons why and to try and see if we can address some of the barriers. Um, I just wondered if the cabinet member is aware of this and if he's got any proposals to uh, uh, limit the number of parents that are discontinuing their, their children's education. Obviously, it's a, a choice for parents, but if there's, if there's barriers, then they could be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor Blundell, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Thomas, for the question. Uh, yes, it is something that we've been made aware of. It was raised again, it was raised again when we yesterday by the acting head of Ascolabeca Scare, 
uh, about children from Portugal going to the going to the Maitreen, but not then going on to when they go to nursery and uh, and go on and, uh, and through their education and don't go into this English medium in, in Portugal. And that's the very point of why we're bringing those seedling schools into Portugal is to allow those parents, if they still wish for their children to learn from the medium of Welsh, to get that opportunity in Portugal and then to transfer and then to start the build up for when we build a the, the new school in uh, a new Welsh medium school in Portugal um in in the, in the future and and i guess that's the same as well how we're doing it in it, we're going to look at it see if it's possible in in the southeast of the borough as well i just mentioned to councillor evans councillor williams uh it's about giving the, them the opportunities on their doorstep but as councillor williams said being able to see it to be you know is to be able to do it and so that's where the plan is we're going to start it in both call and Hopefully we'll be able to see more results coming forward, but that's the aims of the West, is to bring it closer to people and give people, as you say, to, to be able to see it going forwards and, and to, um, as you say, stop that uh, drop off if parents still wish to have their children raised in the medium of Welsh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Brando. Um, you've uh, sort of previewed my next uh, contribution really and uh, that is to say that um, you know you mentioned in the report that childcare availability reflects demand, and you know you refer to the towns within Bridgend, such as my state, Port Call and Bridgend, but it does ignore the town of Pencoid, uh, which uh, within the local development plan is likely to see a significant increase in its population over the course of the West period. And when you consider potential new developments identified in the LDP to the east of the town, and of course our strategic proximity to the M4 in a very central location, which accesses both in Cardiff in Swansea, this is likely to see the town grow exponentially over the course of the West period of 10 years. Uh, you know, you've mentioned uh, in the report uh, gaps uh, in areas such as Yorgo Valley, the Garu Valley, Bridgend East and Port Um, But I uh, would agree with you that uh, there isn't sufficient um, um, childcare availability or Welsh language education along the M4 corridor. Um, just building on what uh, Councillor Thomas said, if I may, uh, so on a connected matter on page 18 of the pack, um, there's a generic statement, I think, there to say that the local authority remains committed alongside partners to improve transition rates from childcare to me Welsh medium education. But from the data which you provide within the document, this seems very highly variable across the local authority. Could we have a little more detail about uh, the uh, variability in transition rates. Is it because of the proximity to those schools uh, or is there another reason for the uh, variability in transition rates, which can vary from 90% in some cases and 10% in others? Councillor Hugh David, please. Um, undoubtedly, undoubtedly, Chair, that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, location of the, the the primary school is is a factor. So the the the, the low low transition in Perth call is we uh, were quite clear in our uh, analysis and understanding of that is because we don't have primary provision within the town of of, of Perth call, and that's one of the reasons we're very excited about our proposals for a new new seedling school there. Uh, we know that um, the the location of childcare and the convenience of childcare is also important when we have uh, families and most families will have more than one child. And one of the reasons why uh, we are opening the childcare hub for Bridgend in Broog is to make that transition as seamless as possible from the early years into primary uh, provision. It's also the reason why uh, we will uh, be developing that childcare hub in Puthcall at the seedling provision. So the transition is from is from childcare into early years uh, education, early years, early years uh, school, and uh, likewise um, we've we've developed the. Uh, the new, we're developing the new provision in the Gower Valley at Betters, just a, a stone's throw away from uh, the uh, the Welsh Medium Primary School for uh, the Gower Valley, Callan uh, uh, Callan uh, 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 
obviously we don't have a separate uh, Welsh medium primary school in uh, the Ogmore uh, Valley that is served by by Callan uh, uh, Camoys. So that uh, uh, hub it will be at at Black Mill, um, uh, but that was was chosen because of the uh, the advantages around uh, ease of access for parents travelling south to, to work, etc. There's been a range of factors considered uh, around the the development of 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 those those childcare hubs. Uh, but but we we're, we're confident that that will make a difference in terms of that uh, that uh, transition uh, chair for uh, for uh, families and parents. Okay, Lita, that's a, a thanks for that intervention. I'll bring in Councillor Amanda Williams now. Apologies, I'm just trying to work my computer as well. Apologies for my voice as well. I just wanted to raise here that some of the experiences that have been shared with me that might also be a reason why there are less children going on to secondary schools, um, Welsh secondary schools. And as a number of parents in my ward have said that they've sent their children to the Welsh medium school because it's the closest school that's had capacity um, in, at the primary level. But that they and there were no other English medium schools in the area with capacity. But because they're not, none of the family are Welsh speakers, they felt that they've moved their children to an English medium school then because they cannot support their children in their further education. And I wonder if that's another issue and how to support those individuals, because sometimes the school for primary is based on the closest proximity to the home as well. Thanks. Uh, did the leader want to take that one or was it, um, I didn't see Councillor Blundell's hand shoot up and then shoot back down again. Councillor Blundell, would you like to take it? I think Councillor David's uh, hand is a legacy hand. Maybe. Sorry, I, I double clicked and I didn't realise I double clicked to lower and raise my hand. So apologies, it wasn't a, oh well, put my hand down now very quickly. Um, uh, yes, there are courses available, Councillor Williams. Uh, you raise a very valid point about parents not being able uh, possibly to help the children with their homework and so if there are courses available to help parents um, learn that just that bit of Welsh that will be able to help them encourage their children continue to learn through the medium of Welsh I think we can possibly look at highlighting them more maybe I, I don't want to give you recommendations get a chair uh, you know that wouldn't be improper of me as captain member. but um, more than happy to to there are just to say there are courses available for parents uh, who who uh, will be able to help Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I'm sure we'll build, build that into our recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Blendel. Uh, Councillor Tim Thomas, please. Um, I was going to leave my question a little later, but seeing as we're uh, talking about uh, transition from primary to secondary school, I think it's a, a good opportunity. Uh, as I said, I've got one child in Brogo, another one, an older one in Ascol Flanganoid. And I've got nothing but praise for the leadership and the teaching staff at both schools. Um, I think the leadership at our school, Flanganoid, is outstanding. Well-deserved uh, Head Teacher of the Year. Um, so there's, there's no doubt on the quality of the teachers, but I would raise a concern about the quality of the building facilities. And this is something that has been um, addressed to me by constituents, uh, parents as well that we're friendly with. And there's concerns about things like the quality of the tennis courts, the quality of the science labs, the drama studio, and the, the general upkeep of the building. And when I've engaged with the school uh, to, for, for various uh, activities involving my daughter, I would say that the school looks at best dated, at worst dilapidated. And I am concerned that this is a factor uh, for some parents in choosing, in, in, in choosing their children's uh, um, education route. So I'm just wondering, does the cap is the cabinet member satisfied with the quality of the building facility? And is he concerned at all that this could influence some parents' uh, decisions? Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Councillor Blandle, please. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Chair. Um, as, you, as, as I mentioned earlier, Councillor Thomas, I visited um, 
Ascot Governor Murray Langanoid early, earlier this year, and I visited previously with a, a different hat on. And you you are correct. It, there are you know there is maintenance work that is needed, but there are maintenance work um, in schools across our county borough. Um, I, I don't know if if head teachers take this opportunity when myself and the director go visit, they go and show us uh, these pieces so we can chase them up for them. Um, but what I can say is part of our 21st century schools modernization program, uh, Gaynor and her team are, as I said, as I believe has been men not mentioned here, but in, in other meetings is going through um, what we're looking to submit for our bands. It's not called band C anymore, but that's what I'll call it for this instance, band C, uh, about where we will modernize schools going forward. And that obviously that report hasn't been uh, published yet. And so I, I won't be able to give into great details of it, but you will notice that in the WESP as well, it, we raised that we are going, we are looking at possibly moving uh, Flangonoid or um, to a different site to make it. So it'll be a brand spanking new site as you would have seen in, in your own ward in, in Bremenin Primary School and CCYD, Councillor Thomas. So th that's where we're going at the moment. And that report says, I think there was a training session on it uh, a month and a half ago now, uh, where we said it'd be about in the summer. I don't know if Lindsay or Gaynor want to come in and give a bit more detail around that piece of work. But um, just to say, we, we are looking at our schools and how we can create, how we can develop them going forward. And because we do have quite a number of older schools, you know, what we have quite a number of Victorian Edwardian schools as well, who's, uh, who are looking their age, shall I say. Um, so at this present moment in time, that's what we're looking at at the moment. And once that report is finished, that will then, as a cabinet, that will formulate our thinking of what schools will be. I can see Lindsay's got his hand up. So I will pass over to my director, if you would allow me, Chair. On mute. I was on the mute, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Gandalf. Lindsay, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Thomas, for the question. Um, it, it is challenging. There's no doubt about that. And as Councillor Brundle has said, when we look at the secondary provision in particular across Bridgend, um, there's around £18 million of backlog maintenance across our secondary estate. So it is a challenging figure. So when we look at Tranganide, for example, um, as with several of our schools, obviously it needs work and we are, we are mindful to, as a rolling programme of refurbishment, address this in many of our schools. Um, with Tranganide, over the last four years, we've spent over a million pound at the school to provide capital upgrades within the school. And the point that Councillor Thomas raised is quite right is with regard to the science labs. I, I know my rig, and again, just to share um, the comments that have been made by several people on this call, Chair, we, we are hugely proud of, of my rig and his achievements as head teacher of the year. Again, I was um, very, very pleased to attend the ceremony. And it's, it's, it's a remarkable achievement for my rig and for the company. So I would certainly echo those points, comes to us. But with regard to Clangan, yes, it's been highlighted with regard to the science labs. Um, it's also a number of other works that are required at the school with regard to the boilers in the school and some roof work. Um, that is programmed, but again, in line with some of the requirements in other schools, um, obviously it's a challenge and they need to be addressed in turn. With regard to Brogo, of course, we, we are aware that um, we are planning a new school for, for Brogo. We will see you know, a dramatic difference, obviously, then in the facilities that are available for those learners. So again, you know, we are addressing that area. But I think it's important to, just to, to reiterate, Chair, what the leader said, myself, the leader, uh, and Councillor Blundell, along with um, another award member, who were in uh, Escalabetro Scare yesterday. And again, we've identified a building there that needs significant improvement. And as a result of that, obviously, we are building a new school in that area as well. So, Councillor Thomas, just to reassure you, obviously, there is significant effort to improve our facilities. Um, but just we are all mindful of the fact that it's required, to, uh, required across the estate, not just in much medium schools. Thank you, Jen. Mute again. Um, thank you very much, Lindsay, and uh, I'm sure we'll all want to associate uh, uh, our, uh, your comments with um, the congratulations uh, for Myrick on his achievement. Uh, does anyone else have anything, any other comments on outcome one? Otherwise, we move to outcome two. Can't see any hands raised. So therefore, we move to our, uh, outcome two and uh, Please, if anyone would like to contribute, could you raise your hand, please? I have a couple of questions, if I may, uh, then. 
uh, on um, page 25, uh, outcome two, uh, you note uh, plans to enlarge and relocate uh, Askol Borgul to a more central location and increase the pupil admissions number from 54 to 75. Um, I'm just wondering whether you feel that this has sufficient capacity over the course of the West. Um, you know, do you feel that it's a 21 increase in the pan over five years to accommodate current and future demand, which covers Bridge End, the Valley's Gateway, Pencoid? Is that sufficient, especially given the growth figures which you've cited on page 29 regarding Askel Callan and uh, But I know um, this is slipping into, into outcome three a little bit, so I'm breaking my own rules. But is there, my essential question is, is there capacity at Askel Borgo to satisfy the potential um, uh, increase in demand over the course of the um, of the of the West period, the five year West. Gainer, please. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. We moved into the afternoon session now. Um, uh, for the purposes of the recording, my name is Gainer Thomas, and I'm the school's program manager for BCBC. So, in terms of capacity at YG Bruago, the question you've raised, obviously, there'd be seventy five place pan. But that will be delivered by um, September 25. The 10 year WESP obviously is a longer, much longer period than that. And there are plans during that period to also increase provision in the Pencoid area and potentially within the um, within the Bridgend Town and Valley's Gateway area in terms of a 3 to 19 school for the replacement YGG Tlanganoid. So capacity will increase not only for Broagur, but also for the Pencoid area and also as part of the 3 to 19 school by one form of entry for that school. So there will be additional provision provided within the 10 year West. Primary. Is that clear, Thank, you. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed for the, those reassurances. Uh, again, does anyone have any comment, further comments on that? I think that, that was reassuring. Uh, Councillor David, the leader. Just to reiterate that a commitment from myself and Councillor Blundell and, and all the cabinet members that we are, um, we will consider uh, other options. It is not, though that is very uh, significant, the expansion at Broog, that is far from being our only um our only uh, plans for the 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 east of 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 the borough, if I can if I can describe uh, the communities as uh, in, in that way, and I think that's a, a, a fair geographical description of them because they're growing communities, uh, and, and we'll we'll bring those proposals forward to, to members, and there are a range of different options that we will consider to to achieve those. Uh, 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 objectives because it is the start this is a 10-year program and it doesn't end with these objectives we have to go uh further and farther uh, uh and we will around expanding uh, uh welsh medium uh, provision in the east of the borough thank you chair okay thank you uh leader um do you have any other contributions no. Um, perhaps I can turn to the west of the borough then, if we can describe communities like that, as you said. And um, just uh, with regards to the recent judicial review in Ethan Port Talbot on their failure to measure the effects on the Welsh language and Welsh medium provision of an English medium education development. Uh, what new measures have BCBC put in place in order to avoid the same issues happening here? And you'll obviously be aware that BCBC was recently notified of the failure to comply with the language standards by the Welsh Language Commissioner with the Canfi Hill expansion, for example. So what has changed since this notification, especially to assist with the expansion of Ascola Berchasker, which is a significant contributor to this new target in outcome two, but also with any further expansions and developments in English medium provision? And we'll have lost the meeting, but Gain is going to take this. Yeah, um, the local authority has um, developed a new Welsh language impact assessment form, which will be um, completed in relation to any consultation exercise that is undertaken. It's a much, much more robust document now than what was previously put out as part of a consultation. And also in, with regards to the Welsh language standards, we will be asking as part of any consultation um, about the adverse effect on the Welsh language. So we will be asking for cont contributions from um, stakeholders as to whether or not any proposal in respect to the Welsh language or English language will have an adverse or 
effect on the Welsh language and that will report be reported then through to cabinet for their considerations in the in terms of their decision making so I think going forward I think we'll have a better robust um, document that contributors will be able to um, give their opinion on I think um, it's it's much better now and in terms of consultations going forward we have obviously have the WESP coordinator who will be able to assist us with completion of that form because as, as, as a local authority we need to understand um, up front where our um, where, where the issues potentially lie um, but also we need to also recognize there may be other th other factors that we won't be aware of until we complete those consultation um, exercises. But I can assure you that it is a better, better process than what was available previously. Thank okay, you. thank you, thank you again. Thank you, uh, thank you for the reassurances which you've uh, 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 given us there on the robust process and the liaison with uh, external stakeholders uh, to ensure that uh, we don't suffer from the same problems. Uh, Councillor Hugh David, the leader, please. Just, oh, sorry, Chair. Problems with IT here. Just to confirm that uh, there's there's no uh, expansion of uh, English medium places at Kempthick Hill. This is a, uh, a re replacement school following very serious um, issues with the the infant site at um, at at Kempthick Hill. The the infant uh, provision for Manith Kempthick, which meant that we we've, we've had to provide temporary classrooms. We had to have a replacement uh, at school, uh, and of course the the Welsh medium provision for uh, uh, Kenfig Hill is at uh, Vachasque, and we are more than more than doubling the uh, capacity at uh, that uh, uh, school. Uh, and then in the west, the borough, the only uh, plans we currently have. Um, uh, around a, a new new school in Pathcall is for a, a Welsh uh, medium uh, school in the in the, in the form of that 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 senior, senior school that I referred to to earlier. So uh, very clear, very confident that uh, our, our ambitions in the west of Borough are very much focused uh, on uh, Welsh medium provision uh, expansion. Thanks, thanks for that, uh, uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor David. Uh, are there any other comments then now on outcome two? Otherwise, we'll move, move forward. Oh, I can't see any hands raised. So we'll therefore move to the next section uh, on uh, outcomes three, four, and five. Uh, they are covered by one of the subgroups of the Welsh Education Forum. Are there any comments at all on this? No. I've exhausted all my comments, so uh, <laughs> I won't intervene again. Uh, and then uh, the next grouping, oh, Councillor Tim Thomas would like to come in on three, four and five. Oh, sorry, Chair, I'd, I'd like to come in on the additional learning needs bit, and I think, which I think is item six, if I'm not mistaken. Am there I right? Or? And, yeah, unless anyone, it is item six, so unless anyone's got anything on uh, three, four and five, yeah, you're more than welcome to come in. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, um, yeah, I just want to speak in really as a parent who has a child who has both additional learning needs and is educated in the uh, uh, medium of Welsh. Just wanted to bring a little bit of positivity to say how um, how impressed and how outstanding I think the support is. Um, so I'd like to thank the cabinet member, the director, and all staff really involved in in this provision. Really, um, I'm, I'm I, obviously I was very my wife and I we were very passionate about our children being educated in the medium of, of Welsh. And I'm just, um, I'd just like some reassurance really um, for those parents that do have children with additional learning needs who may have concerns about putting their children through um, Welsh medium, how, how, are the, how are these really good services being promoted to reassure children? Because at the end of the day, the Welsh language is of course uh, a phonetic language and it's, it's potentially uh, uh, more advantageous than, than the English language. And I can say that through personal experience as being someone who's dyslexic and dyspraxic and going through English medium education. So I'm just wondering really how we're promoting th these excellent services that are already provided to reassure parents. Thank you. 
Thank you for that uh, positive feedback, uh, Councillor Thomas. But I'm not sure whether I could, uh, I could, <laughs> judging by my earlier experience, I can actually speak it as well as English. But uh, Councillor, Har um, Councillor, Councillor Harvey, then, but Lindsay, then Councillor David. Thanks, Chair, and, and thanks very much for your comments, uh, Councillor Thomas. They, they, they are very well received, um, certainly by officers and particularly by um, head teachers. If I could um, sort of preface the, the, the feedback here, Chair, with um, through you inviting the chairs, uh, the head teachers who are on this call in at the end of um, uh, my preamble, because I think it'd be handy just for the committee to hear back from the heads that are here, because they do a remarkable job in, in the schools. Um, we have um, a number of really good Welsh medium schools in our borough. We've got very talented head teachers, as we heard earlier, and they, they go um, that extra yard continuously for all of the learners, um, with those with the, uh, learning uh, needs uh, in particular. And I know Michelle will talk a little later on about some of the um, investments we've made with regard to learning resource centres within those schools, which has been very, very positive. Um, I think Councillor Thomas's point is really important. Um, we visited already this term three Welsh medium schools, uh, myself the leader and Councillor Blundell, with regard to um, just visiting the schools, um, walking around, speaking to learners, speaking to staff. And we see schools there that are full of learners that are keen to learn, very happy in their environment, and clearly their needs are being met. Um, it doesn't happen by chance, of course, Chair, as you know, it happens through a lot of professional development, a lot of strong leadership from the head teacher and the governing body, and also significant investment from the local authority, both in terms of finance and in terms of training for staff. So, again, I think it is important that we recognise that. And I think through you, Chair, if we could, it might be helpful for Michelle to provide the officer context, but then for head teachers who are present to provide an update on some of the excellent work that they do in the schools. So, uh, through you, Chair. Absolutely. Lindsay, if Councillor David's happy for Michelle uh, and the uh, head teachers uh, to do that, then uh, yeah, he seems to be happy. So we'll hand over to Michelle. Um, it's really heartening to hear some positive feedback because we're very much committed to providing um, and meeting children's needs with, with additional learning needs through the medium of Welsh. As you know, we have um, learning resource centres for children with autism in Kalina Camoys and Eskol Gavin Gamrai Tlanganoid, which means that any child that has um, a diagnosis of ASD can then follow their um, education through the medium of Welsh. Also, you would have seen through Cabinet that we've got, uh, we've recently opened um, this term, a moderate learning difficulty learning resource centre at Canoid Sant, Eskol Canoid Sant. And also then, as part of our plan, we're looking at, with the, in conjunction with the development of Escobrogor, we've identified a need for an observation class through the medium of Welsh. So we are proactive um, in working with, with colleagues. We've undertaken additional learning needs strategic planning provision review, and we have um, Welsh um, medium head teachers on that, on that planning review. So, yeah, absolutely committed to ensuring that that any child with an additional learning need can continue their education through the medium of Welsh. We also have provision at the bridge, alternative provision, which is our PRU, and then obviously specialist staff within, within that service. You asked um, how we can promote with parents, and that really is much our focus going forward as Lindsay said that golden thread through the west is how we can promote market and celebrate it's really important to have those three things we have marketed and promoted to date with with the new learning resource centers and monitored those needs very closely by utilizing the data that we have in our systems but I really really appreciate on behalf of myself staff and also the, the head teachers, um, because they do a tremendous work with the learning resource centres that we have. Um, I do appreciate your comments. Thank you, Michelle. You know, as we say, a plane landing safely at Heathrow doesn't make the news. So uh, uh, I really appreciate uh, positive feedback from Councillor Thomas there. And uh, please, can I invite uh, head, head teachers and other invitees to uh, raise their hand and contribute if they would wish to do so? And please don't hesitate to use the um, Welsh language facility that we've got available uh, today. Um, uh, head teacher Myra Jones. 
Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity to come. Um, I'll explain. My, my name is Mary Jones. I'm the head teacher of Scotland and Gunnard, and I'm very grateful for the kind uh, comments that have been made today regarding provision that happens across our schools. Um, what is a cause of celebration for me more than anything, though, is the work that happens as a cluster um, in the Welsh medium schools. As we look at the provision that we have, not only for our digital learning these children, but also for learners across the whole school, the cooperation in developing the curriculum and a new uh, continuum for the curriculum for our school has been but also timely. The changes that have happened in the legislative um, that we now um, have more cooperation within um, the school with the families. We had a secondary for families earlier, and then a plan for the needs of an individual um, earlier on in their education, and then ensure that the process is in place for them. And the development of the new curriculum too has enabled that and so that there is a a whole menu, a list of things available for them. And these resource centers that they have uh, across the county for the medium of Wales have also enabled um, all the appropriate interventions um, come into place in order to su support that individual. And so what we want to see is that this could develop further for learners um, who um, are post-16 so that they can get the same support in moving onwards for the future. But yeah, um, very grateful. Um, on behalf of the sector, that, that we can um, receive that, that praise and ensure that that message is shared by all the county stakeholders and parents so that they've got the right information so that um, the children transfer to the right sectors. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Myrick, for that uh, intervention. I don't know any, if anyone else was receiving uh, difficulty in hearing uh, some of that. Uh, there was some in, uh, breakup of the translation, unfortunately, uh, from my perspective, but perhaps uh, that was just isolated to me. Um, but uh, thank you very much, Myrick, for that intervention. Uh, anyway, could I invite any other uh, invitees to contribute? Councillor Thomas, did you want to intervene? No. No, I pressed my thumb up by accident, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Michelle, please. Uh, Dion, I just wondered whether, um, not to put on the spot, whether the head teacher of Avenue Valley might want to come in with the excellent work that she's done um, with. Um, with the Welsh language in her school and also you know there's not a learning resource centre there but then in supporting children with additional learning needs. Yes uh, Michelle thank you very much uh, for putting her on the spot and uh, <laughs> <laughs> happy <Michelle>? to introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> Deal, Nicola. <laughs> Pranada. Um, Pranada. For record, I, my name is Nicola Williams, head teacher at Avnavellin Primary School. Um, we're not Welsh medium um, educationists, however, we very much fly the flag. And uh, as an English medium school, we are very much promoting the Welsh language uh, through our our involvement and our success through uh, achieving the goal status for Shatayaith and also ensuring that um, from a professional development point of view and our partnership working and collaboration within our cluster across a uh, Welsh medium and English medium that we're promoting promoting that Welsh language development because ultimately um, we talked about the beginning, didn't we, about the improvement of the one million Welsh speakers. I think we have to do that in partnership with English medium as well. And, and that ha has to go um, alongside the, the strength of the development that's happening across this local authority at this present time. Um, I think as a school, we've been able to support um, our English medium uh, staff and understanding because of our particular catchment and the needs of my school in this, this specifically due to having a high free school meals percentage and having some challenging needs um, it, it's a demonstration that Welsh can be delivered and can be achievable to all learners 
from whatever starting point there is. And I think that's a, a strong message to, to convey uh, to all schools across the local authority and also to parents who perhaps are making those choices at an early years point that they're actually, it is accessible and achievable, providing that the provision is there for those families across the whole of the local authority. Thank you very much, Nicola. You've uh, allowed me to tick off a lot of the points which I was going to make about parental support and collaboration with the Welsh language uh, medium uh, sector. Uh, and promotion of Welsh mediums, uh, medium uh, education. And uh, I note as well that Ascol Gavin Llanganoid has a, a collaboration arrangement with Ascol uh, um, Gavin Llanhari, I believe. Um, and there's, um, there's much to be done to uh, promote uh, the Welsh, uh, Welsh language going forward. And I know that's a key part of the uh, West, as Michelle has uh, mentioned. So thank you for your, thank you for your intervention there. Um, this uh, neatly uh, brings us on to uh, outcome seven, and then the uh, promotion, the the promotion agenda. Um, I, I apologise if uh, Myra has already mentioned uh, this in uh, his remarks. However, I was experiencing a lot of disruption on the translation, unfortunately, on my uh, sound system. Um, so um, I wanted to put it to uh, both officers and invitees uh, about. Um, the need uh, for re recruitment and retention of staff uh, in the area. Um, this is um, uh, described in detail in outcome seven. Um, I, know, I appreciate uh, that Welsh teachers, whether it be in the English medium schools or uh, Welsh medium schools are pretty much like gold dust. Uh, so apart from, uh, apart from training bursaries, how will we incentivize young people to enter the Welsh medium childcare and education profession and then retain them in this. Uh, so perhaps uh, colleagues can explore that in, in a little more detail. Um, invitees in the, in, who are practitioners in the, in the school profession as well as uh, officers. Uh, Myra, please. Uh, I'll say it in English just in case that there's a breakup uh, in the communication. Um, I think the most important part really is, is that continuum of language um, and that the opportunities are there. Um, I think what we're looking at is that the need for growth in Bridge End is uh, important to sustain Llanganoid um, to be a school that can offer the same number of qualifications at post 16 as we do see across um, the partnership of schools in the English medium sector. Um, and that then is that co cooperation and collaboration that we do with Llanhari um, in order to offer those subjects. Because because the greater number of learners that we have following these subjects increases the viability of the school to, to offer those subjects to everyone that will then go on to university. Um, and I think, you know, it is difficult because, you know, you need the teachers to be able to teach the learners and then you need the learners to become the teachers. Um, but what we look at is, is ensuring by offering the best level of qualification and the greatest number of qualifications available through the medium of Welsh, then we will make a difference. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm taking on the points of Councillor Thomas with about the facilities. Yes, we do have um, facilities that are older than what we would wish as a new school. Um, but, you know, it's working at the vision of improving those facilities, making sure that there are um, different avenues available to our learners so they're not at a disadvantage uh, and then showing that the profession is a, a good profession and you know we have seen an increase in the number of staff that do live locally former learners of Llanhari now being able to teach through the medium of Welsh um, in the uh, local authority so you know Yes, it is a challenge, and I'm not going to deny that. But, you know, I've just come from one meeting with Welsh Government and EWC looking at those elements uh, of what challenges there are. And I think that's what it is. We work as um, a cluster of Welsh medium schools across Wales as CADAG, um, you know, looking and, you know, changing the way people perceive the profession, but also offering those avenues in. You know, there was great announcement this week that the B grades have been uh, changed to C grades, so they're allowing 
allowing people to come in at a different level to make us be able to compete with England. Uh, and that's a message we've been drilling through as a Welsh medium sector for many, uh, many a year. Um, we also, you know, committed to working with our partners at uh, Cardiff Met, the Open University, the Athrova and Swansea, given those opportunities for people to come here. We are a lead alliance school so that we are able to do that. And that, that, that's the only way we can continue is to be able to do this important pieces of work that will then grow um, the workforce um, that then, you know, ensuring that they um, they are coming then to teach you. But more than anything, if we are a good school with good standards, you know, we're appealing to uh, any person who'd like to come and teach. Diolch. Thank you uh, for that uh, invaluable contribution, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Lindsay. Thank you, Chair. And just to confirm, yes, Thank you. it is a good school. Uh, we've had some very good results over many years, and it is appealing to um, to teachers. Um, the, the challenge, my, as mentioned, is quite right. This is probably the biggest challenge we have um, at the moment is with regard to the recruitment and retention of, of staff. Um, one of the things that I know some people on the call would be aware of is um, this was a, I had a long discussion with Myrick about this um, some months ago. Um, and as a result of this, as I'm lead director for Central South Consortium, I convened a group um, to look at this in particular. Um, and we've, we've addressed some of these challenges directly with some of the organisations that MyRig has mentioned, for example, Welsh Government and with Education Workforce Council. And if it's OK with you, Chair, very quickly, I'll just go through some of the actions that uh, we, we, we're trying to push forward. Because, again, I think we're all keen here to see action uh, match the rhetoric as well. So I'll go through some of the things. Um, first of all, I think one of the, the key issues we have is to develop that clear vision. Um, we, what are we about? What are we after with as far as operational plans to back up our long term aspirations? So I know Central South are working with us um, extensively on that. Um, in addition, I think there's a need to increase the funding, both to support the recruitment of teachers, but also to support um, the development of, of young people through initial teacher training and education. And part of that really is to make sure all routes um, through the qualified teacher status are, are investigated and fully explored to allow people coming into the profession to see it, as Myrick said, as an exciting place to work, and not just in Bridgend, but more generally in, in Welsh medium settings. So from a Welsh medium point of view, we're working very closely with them. Um, the minister, as you know, chair, and the, um, the, the director for education and Welsh language are obviously big supporters of where we're heading here. So again, they are supporting us on that. With regard to Education Workforce Council, this is, this is another important one for us, is to make sure that we uh, provide the, the easiest possible um, way for people to be recruited into the profession. And I think that's been something that we've seen uh, certainly been fed back from a number of schools. It's not always clear. So we're working with Hayden Clewellyn, the chief executive of EWC, uh, on this. And also, I think as my rig messenger, is to make sure that we're able to react flexibly to the demands of schools and the needs of the profession to make sure we can deploy teachers um, to, to areas such as my stake, for example, and they see that as being a, a really positive place to, to work. I think in addition to that, we need to work with regulators such as Estin. And I think that's really important for us just to make sure that you know they understand some of the challenges that the Welsh medium sector are facing. And they understand the shortage, especially as Myrick said, some, some of the subject specialism, especially at post 16 in these settings. So I think that's important as well, because again, it's, it's, it's an issue that's frequently brought up to my attention by head teachers. Another issue is around qualifications wheels, because a part of the challenges, of course, is to make sure that we see all of the qualifications um, available in Welsh and equally available through English and all of the resources, as Canon Evans mentioned earlier, to be aligned with those. And that's something to that be working closely with um, the qualifications board on. In addition, I think it's important we work closely with other providers. So as part of our regular strategic meetings with Bridgend College, Welsh language is one of our top five priorities. And we look at two areas there, Chair. First of all, the training route, but also then the more, more vocational training into employment. So again, that's part of regular meetings we have with those. So the discussions with employers and careers wheels are obviously critically important. And then just finally, really, and um, I, I don't know if Chris is with us today, Chris Newcomb from um, Central South. Um, one of the things that I know the Central South are doing is to make sure that support for schools is being made available in English medium schools as well, to make sure that um, qualifications in, in Welsh are obviously readily available and supported in those settings as well. So, so sorry, Chair, there's a lot to get on with you, but it's something like my I'm particularly passionate about. 
Um, and I just want to give them, the committee some flavour of the activity that's going on, on behind the scenes to first of all recognise the challenges, but also to push them forward. Apologies for taking so long, Jay. Thank you. No, thank you very much for that comprehensive response, uh, Lindsay. It was uh, very helpful. Um, Councillor Thomas, please. He's just touched on my question a little bit, which I'm, it's reassuring because I thought I was going off tangent a little bit. But I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that today's Welsh learners and today's young Welsh speakers are tomorrow's workers. And um, I know that this is, this is in light of the um, 2050 target of one million uh, Welsh speakers in Wales. And I think it's really I think I think the Welsh language is quite strong in the public sector. It needs strengthening perhaps in the private sector. And I know that the education directorate engage with local employers in an, e in, in an English language context, if you like. Do we do that in terms of the Welsh uh, language, um, the, the Welsh language context as well? And I say that because I, I have had a little look at the Welsh language promotion strategy 21-26, which is now two years into that strategy. And one aim is to promote the Welsh language um, in town centres and, and the business community as well. So I'm just wondering how successful we're doing that in promoting the Welsh language with the business community for, for, for the future workers who, who are our Welsh speakers at the moment. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Councillor Thomas. Uh, Lindsay, please. Thanks, Chair. It's a very timely question, Councillor Thomas, thank you. Um, as part of the meeting we had with um, Progen College last week, um, which um, myself, Simon Prott, and uh, the Chief Executive, Mark Shepard, were at, that's precisely the question we asked, actually. We were looking at how we engage employers better um, through the medium of Welsh, and it was part of the discussion we had previously with regard to engaging, for example, um, providers coming into our Welsh medium childcare settings. So we we're looking at it from two angles. First of all, increasing the throughput of uh, learners that are comfortable working um, in Welsh and have the skills to do so. And also we recognising and celebrating um, the skills that Welsh language speakers and what they can bring to local businesses. So it was certainly a discussion we picked up there. Um, you might be aware of um, Sue, Sue Whittaker, uh, one of the officers who leads on employability for GEND. Um, she was involved in the meeting along with um, Yain Sherwood from an economic uh, economic regeneration point of view. So a timely question is certainly something that we, we've looked at with the Regen College now to, to take forward a joint plan. Um, with regard to additional engagement, Chair, I can see that Alex uh, Howells has her hand, her hand up and, and Alex will pick up some of the engagement work. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Lindsay. Uh, Alex, please. Apologies, um, I have got a dog barking in the background, so um, please bear with me. Um, just to build on, just to build on, Lindsay, um, we are working with a local mental blog or to advertise all of our corporate jobs in the uh, um, monthly magazine as well. So there are, um, you know, there are improvements that we are making in that respect as well. Sorry again for the dog. Thank you, Alex. I can sympathise. My spaniel always goes off at the wrong wrong point in time as well, so no problem at all. Uh, thank you very much for your, for your contribution. Um, thank you uh, to everyone. Are there any other contributions? Uh, Councillor Winstanley. Hello. Um, I'm really excited about um, pro the promotion of Welsh language and as someone who has been learning Welsh as an adult, um, I'm just wondering if we could talk a little bit more about what opportunities there are for teachers who are currently teaching in English medium to, um, to, to develop their skills in the Welsh language and perhaps convert to Welsh medium um, education. Thank you, Councillor Winstanley. Uh, Michelle, please. Uh, Dil, thank you. Yeah, that's something that we're looking at within the first year of, of the five year WASP is that language competency um, using the SWAC data. Um, and that's really important to see what workforce we've got and the opportunities that are available. Um, Central South Consortium offer um, various courses and support for newly qualified teachers for the Aspire program. Um, and then obviously moving through then to the initial teacher training program. But it's really important to, to identify 
um, what the Welsh workforce is or and those teachers in English medium schools as well with a competency through Welsh. So just to reassure that is the focus of, of the work of the first year of the West and that's in outcome subgroup outcome six and seven. I don't know whether Becky you want to come in and say anything further on that point uh, through the chair. Sure Michelle. Uh, Becca? Yeah. Um, lots of schools over the over the years have taken up the offer with CSC for the sabbatical where they learn Welsh in a year and um, part of the five-year plan would be to look at those staff that have taken up that offer and to make sure then that they're able to lead Welsh um, at a strategic level within their school or to move from the Welsh uh, move over to the English from English <coughs> medium to the Welsh medium sector. Thank you, Becca. Uh, Mary, please. Yeah, I was just going to say um, this year um, we've used the um, Welsh Government grant for increasing capacity um, in order for us to um, entice um, staff from the English medium sector over. Um, and that's been then supporting them then in that transition from one language to another with terminology and so forth. Um, but also, you know, closing the gap and where we had different areas um, that we needed to plug really in specialist um, subject areas, um, maths and physics being one of them. Um, and, and also to celebrate, you know, our deputy head teacher um, is somebody who's only had English medium education um, as a pupil um, and then on to college and is now in the sector, you know, working with us so it's important to um, take advantage um, or, or, and the opportunities that are available to come over into the sector but to support them in that way and the additional fundings enabled us to give them the best support possible. Uh, thank you Marek. Uh, are there any further contributions at all on uh, the West? Michelle please. Uh, um, I just wondered whether um, we could ask Beth Davis to speak about the promotion work with Pam B. Dewis Kamrai, the booklet that's been produced with the, with the early years, if that's okay, Chair? Absolutely. Thank you. Please do, please do come in, Beth. Thank you. Thank well, you, Chair. Welcome to the meeting. Thanks. Um, just to introduce myself, uh, Childcare Team Manager. So um, within my remit, uh, we've got a family information service, so I manage that. Um, as part of the wider border remit of the early years from childcare. So I'm pleased to confirm that we've had um, the final draft of the Pam Davis um leaflet. Uh, it's been confirmed today. Uh, so this the kind of idea, the context behind this, just to give a little bit of history, is to, from, from birth really, pre-birth, to, to encourage and raise discussion around the benefits of Welsh medium education, Welsh medium childcare, Welsh medium education. And some colleagues kind of touched on it earlier where the kind of feeling of um, concern about being Welsh um, having Welsh medium education for their children, but not being Welsh speakers themselves, trying to dispel some of the myths around some of the struggles that they, they, might, have, they might have and actually how supportive the schools are um, around, around that and just, really really trying to point out clear pathways into Welsh medium um, childcare and then pathways into Welsh medium education so that is now a live document which will be basically disseminating across 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 all platforms but also focusing on health visitors and midwives even just because we, we we're very acutely aware of how early people and parents carers consider that choice for their for their childcare for their education, um, and it's something that we've worked hard on with 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 WEF um, partners around the table, colleagues, um, and we're pleased that it's it's finally been produced. So that's something that um, I'm hope hopeful that you're all going to see quite soon, and I hope that will support parents and carers with their choices, making positive choices and informed choices for Welsh medium. Joe. Thank you very much, Beth, and, uh, and uh, that does provide uh, reassurances about the holistic approach which you take in, uh, in liaison with uh, other partners. Um, are there any other comments on the uh, Welsh Education Strategic Plan? 
can't see any hands. Okay. Uh, thank you to the leader. Um, uh, Councillor Blundell, officers, head teachers, uh, and the translator um, for their contributions. Um, you, all oh, right. I mean, I leave the meeting, um, and we can all leave for a, a brief uh, pause of uh, uh, five minutes um, uh, before we come to conclusions. So let's have a break. But I will bring in. Sorry, Che, you 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 blanked out on me there for a little bit. I assume I heard Councillor, Bl and then I assumed it was me. You asked me. I was, I was actually through attendance, uh, <laughs> Blundell, um, and uh, I just thanked uh, invitees, uh, head teachers, uh, and uh, our translator Stephen William uh, for uh, joining us, and uh, that we would have a break before uh, considering our conclusions and recommendations. But then you uh, came in and. Uh, Wanted to uh, the, no, it, it, thank you, Chair. No, it, it was literally just to say thank you very much to the committee today for having us. Uh, I hope you found it as rewarding and as uh, insightful as we have. Uh, I, we've got some points I, I'm sure you'll make um, recommendations to us as well to, going forward. So happy to receive them when, when they're ready. So uh, just say thank you, Chair, and thank you, committee. And I will do my best now and, and try and leave this meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Brendel, and thank you to Stephen William, our translator, and I apologise yes, to him. Definitely, apologies. Definitely. Uh, apologies for the quality of my Welsh, uh, but um, uh, I did try and uh, use it uh, to, to the best of my ability. Um, okay, uh, we'll take a five minute break now, everyone, and invitees and officers uh, can now leave the meeting. Thank you very much, Stephen. <laughs>